Hello students, this is example four, the last one of the four examples that we're going to be doing for this topic of effective stress. The thing that's a little bit different about this example compared to one, two, and three is, first of all, all the units are metric. Okay, so you're going to have a look at what a metric example looks like. Next, the water table is above the surface of the ground. So as you can see here, and from the example in your course notes number four, the water level is actually 1.7 meters above the ground level. This could be in the case of, say, a swamp area that you're testing, or a waterway like a river, the sea, uh, a lake, or a flooded area, say in the Mississippi when there is lots of rainfall. So a quick review, we have 1.7 meters worth of water above the surface, then we have 3.2 meters worth of sand with this density, and 19.6 meter, uh, sorry, 4.1 meters worth of clay with this density. The formulas we'll be using for your purposes of review is the vertical stress, the pore water pressure, and the effective stress. Feel free to go back to your lecture notes to review these formulas if you need to. We're going to start with the effective stress. This is sigma v and the units are in kilonewtons per square meter. Metric. Okay. So at the very top, as usual, zero. If you're not sure how I got zero, check out examples one, two, and three. Doesn't make a difference. At the very top, always zero. This is what we have, zero. Okay. At the next interface, where the water gives way to saturated sand, the calculation is exactly as we've done so far. The vertical stress here is the density of the soil above. Well, the soil above is actually just water. So it's 9.81 kilonewton per cubic meter times the depth. The depth of water here is 1.7. And this number is equal to 16.7 kilonewton per square meter. And that's what I'm going to put here. 16.7. As usual, I'll be deleting these calculations in the interest of clarity and making it look a little nicer. But the beauty of the video, you can pause, rewind, and go check out. Next, at this interface, where saturated sand gives way to clay, we're going to calculate the vertical stress. It is the stress above here, so that is 16.7 kilonewtons per square meter, plus the density of this sand, 18.2 kilonewtons per cubic meter, times the depth. This depth is 3.2. This number is 74.9 kilonewtons per square meter. And that's where we are here, 74.9. Lastly, we're ready to move on to the vertical stress at the bottom of this borehole, that is at the bottom of the clay. So to calculate the vertical stress at the bottom of this clay, we start by adding the vertical stress above, which is 74.9 plus, by using this formula, it's the density of clay, 19.6 kilonewtons per cubic meter, times the depth of clay to which this density corresponds, which is 4.1 meters. This result is 155.3, which is what I'm going to put here. 155.3. We're going to go ahead and erase these calculations. And then I'm going to connect these points with straight lines. 
as such. Okay? So each one of these point, these lines has a different slope because the density in these interfaces is different. That's not going to be the case when we do the pore water pressure as we covered in example number three. Let's move on to the pore water pressure. This is pore water pressure, which is U, and it's in kilonewtons per meter squared. Okay, as usual, as we've covered so far, at the very top, zero. Why? Go check out examples one, two, and three. Zero. At the next interface, here, what is the pore water pressure? We're going to use this formula. It's the density of water, which is 9.81 kilonewtons per meter cube times this depth of water above it, which is 1.7 meters. This result is 16.7, right here, 16.7. Okay, let's move on to the pore pressure at this interface. It is the pore pressure above, 16.7, plus the pore pressure in this chunk which is, according to this formula, the density of water, 9.81 times this depth, which is 3.2 meters, and this gives us 48.1 kilonewtons per meter squared. So this is 48.1 kilonewtons per meter squared. Let's calculate then the pore water pressure at this final interface, the bottom of the borehole. We have to first add the pore pressure from all above, which is 48.1 plus, we employ this formula, which is the density of water, 9.81 kilonewtons per cubic meter times this depth, which is 4.1 meters. All of this is equal to 88.3. 88.3, and now I'm going to put the point on the graph, which is about here. 88.3. Now, I'm going to connect these points with a straight line. And don't forget, as we covered in example three, this is the same straight line with the same slope because if the density of water throughout, the density doesn't change it, doesn't change from layer to layer. Okay? I'm going to erase these calculations for clarity and to fit everything. And now I'm going to move on to the final part of this exercise, calculating the effective stress. So what is actually the stress in this soil sample, in this borehole, by taking into account the vertical stress of the soil and the buoyancy of water? The effective stress, which is sigma prime, units are in kilonewtons per square meter. And as I keep on repeating, this is the easiest one because you simply take this value minus this value and plot it here. Let's start from the top one. Zero minus zero equals two. Zero. Let's move down to here. We have 16.7 minus 16.7 equals two. You got it. Zero. So what's happening, as you can see here, because we have a flood situation, in terms of effective soil stress, 
the weight of the water and the buoyancy of the water counteract to give you zero effective stress on the soil. Zero. Next point, 74.9. minus 48.1 equals to 26.8. And the last one, 155.3 minus 88.3, 155.3 minus 88.3 equals to 67.0. And now I'm going to connect these points, 0, 0, 26.8, and 67. Pretend this is a nice straight line. So that concludes the number of examples that uh, I covered in your lecture notes for. There may be an extra one popping up that answers the question, well, based on all that we've done so far, if I were to ask you, compute the effective stress at a depth of, I don't know, let's say 5.5 meters, somewhere in here, would you be able to calculate that? So if I were to ask you for the depth, pardon me, the effective stress at any depth here, would you be able to calculate it? As some of you have probably guessed by now, the answer is yes. An extra example is likely going to appear on Blackboard for you to cover that.